Hey, you guys, it's Shanda. It's Coffee with Shanda at 6 a.m. And I am drinking my macchiato this morning and super fired up. So I wanted to talk to you about how do you overcome the, the mental chatter that takes us out of the game of building a business? In other words, what's a good risk and what's not a good risk? Like when should you hold back or when should you be pushing forward as far as growing your business? So um, I will never forget a time in my life where I used to go to Starbucks every single day. And when I used to go to Starbucks, I used to have, uh, and I don't know if you've ever had this, but I used to literally be in Starbucks all day long and drinking my lattes, pumpkin spice or cinnamon dolce latte. Um, actually, they didn't have cinnamon dolce lattes back then, but like the pumpkin spice, the gingerbread. I mean, I knew every season that Starbucks came out with a new latte because I spent all my time there. But here's what I didn't do. I didn't really, I, I didn't really show up in a productive way. Like if you ever been you know, got, got to the end of your day and you're looking at your, your computer screen and it's like you, you were kind of in busy energy all day, but you never actually got anything done. Well, that wreaks havoc on your mind. That wreaks havoc on your confidence. And what happens is, you know, even though other people might think that you're working really hard, you know that at the end of the day, you're still not getting much, that much uh, accomplished. So I remember those days well. I remember um, also the day where I would come home from Starbucks and there would be a note on my door. And the note would be from the bank that was trying to foreclose, foreclose, foreclose on my property. And I remember feeling like such a loser when that was going on in my life. Like I, I still remember driving through Starbucks because I was addicted to Starbucks. It was like the only place on earth that I felt good. And I remember talking to my stepdad on the phone and my stepdad saying, Shanda, you know, the market is starting to crash even more. And he said, you're young and I think you should let your properties go to foreclosure. And I remember just feeling like a complete loser. In fact, I was selling real estate at the time and I was just like, uh, like what, what, like all the things that our actions you know, affect our reputation, right? So I was like, I sell real estate, I'm losing my homes, what a loser, um, what are people gonna think? And just, I mean, I, the list goes on about how low I felt about myself during that time in my life. But my stepdad was right, and he's a businessman. He um, owns a very, very large company, and he was really trying to teach me a lesson at that point in my life about the difference between, um, you know, good risk and bad risk, you know? And so uh, it's kind of like buying a house is good risk. I mean, it is good risk. And just because I lost my ass in real estate doesn't mean that I would never play the game in real estate again. In fact, I am in the game again, and I'm about to get in the game even bigger by buying a commercial building for Hardcore Business Headquarters in San Diego. And so, you know, you've got to watch that the things that you've done in the past don't affect your future decisions. And yes, you've got to learn from your mistakes, but at the same time, you have to make sure that you dust off the um, the remnants of making mistakes and not make them your future. And what I mean by that is that, um, you know, my stepdad was saying to me, Shanda, you're going to live for seven years with bad credit. Here's the upside. The upside is you're going to learn how to create cash, which is what I did. I mean, now he actually says, I'm a better cash generator than him. And he has a massive company, homes all around the world, you know, yachts, the whole bit. My point in sharing that with you is that if you curl up in the fetal position and die when you have a hard moment, or you make, like if I would say, oh, I'm not gonna go buy a, a headquarters for hardcore business, like I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna put myself out like that because I've made the mistake in the past and I've invested in real estate and lost my ass, then what I would be doing is I would be hurting myself today because when I, this is probably more information than you need, but I'm just trying to get you to understand, like to think differently. If I add up all of my masterminds and my events that I hold for my clients, you know, I'm over a hundred thousand dollars in just hotel fees for the year, like just giving to my clients so that they have a place to congregate, meet each other and for me to teach them live, right? And so why wouldn't I go and invest in a real estate, you know, headquarters for hardcore? Well, maybe because I lost my ass and I'm afraid. 
And I would be lying to you if I said I wasn't afraid. I'd be lying to you. Of course I'm afraid. I'm afraid to go put my put an investment down on a property that feels really big to me and make that risk, but I've learned. And I've learned how to generate cash flow. I've learned how to think differently. And I want you to think about how you're making your decisions because I'll tell you something. Right now, I get the privilege of listening to our coaches as our coaches are working with people all around the world trying to help them make a decision to step in to get business coaching because that's what I do, right? So, but listen to this for a second. I talk to my coaches about many of the people that they're talking to and I stand in front of them and they'll say things to me like, Shanda, this woman, like, she, she's like, money isn't really an issue for her but it's still a stretch to pay the monthly, the monthly coaching fee. And she feels like she's just not ready for this. Let me share something with you. Watch those dialogues inside your head. Like, do you think I feel ready for a building and own a commercial building? No, I still feel like a little girl in it, especially with my hair in a ponytail. <laughs> I feel like a little girl, like growing up in the process. Right? And I'm 40 years, I'm over 40 years old, I'm 41 years old. I feel like a little girl getting into, in, into a, big, a big deal. But at the end of the day, it doesn't, make, it doesn't make sense for me to stay stuck where I'm at, living a life that could be better. And so making this risk takes things to another place where not only do we save money, but now I look at the opportunity, just like when I lost my credit, I look at the opportunity. You gotta look at the opportunity that you gain and go after that opportunity. So be smarter than second guessing the thoughts that have you feel like you're not ready. I don't know if I've ever felt ready. I don't think I felt ready to have a baby. I don't think I feel ready to have another baby. I don't think that I, I feel ready to uh, buy a commercial building for hardcore business. I don't think I feel ready to, um, you know, I, I didn't feel, I, my, I kind of felt ready to get married, but I didn't feel ready to get married when I was, when I got engaged, you know? So my point is, is that if you look back in your history, you often didn't feel ready before you had some of your biggest explosions and breakdown is part of the journey. Breakdown is part of the journey. So will there be things like with buying a commercial building that are going to be a headache for me that I don't know? Yes, yes, but that's how you learn and you wanna bring things into your comfort zone, not give up too early and make sure that you push or, not push isn't the word, risk right, risk right. You know, I, I look at some of my clients, like I, I did a call with some of my clients yesterday and all, there was like 10 of them on the line. And all 10, 10 of them had been through a program that I, that I do called Pace Club. And this is actually the last year that I'm going to personally mentor Pace Club. And then it won't be mentored by me anymore. And so Pace Club, these people have been through Pace Club. And this isn't a Pace Club call. That's not what I'm doing here. I just want you to understand the thinking, right? Because you're trying to grow a business or you're trying to grow your life. And you've got to get on top of these thoughts. So I'm with these people, and there's like 10 of them. And we just did this mini call. And I'm gonna tell you, one of them's retired their husband. Another one has paid off over $300,000 in debt in a couple of years. Another one is doing retreats all around the world, doing something she loves. When she started, she didn't even know, she didn't even know what her thing was. She didn't even know what she would sell, right? She, she had no idea. Right, so what's the difference between good risk and holding yourself back? Here's the difference. Do you have a vision of a bigger life? Do you have a vision of helping more people? Do you have a vision that you know that your life could be bigger than it is right now and you were meant for bigger things? Like I know when I was losing my homes, I, knew, I know when I was getting notices on the door of foreclosure. I still knew deep inside, even though I felt like a loser, I still knew deep down inside that, that my life had more meaning than this moment. That somewhere there was a path, this is why I never gave up, somewhere there was a path that was gonna lead me out of this devastating moment into a place of freedom. I knew that somewhere inside me and somewhere I never let go of the belief. Now I had days where I felt so depressed 
that I literally had a hard time getting out of bed. I felt day, I had days where I stared at the freaking computer again and got nothing done. I had days where I said to myself, Shanda, you don't do what it takes to succeed. And today I sit on the other side of it, making multiple millions of dollars a year from my living room here in San Diego. It's pitch black outside right now. As you guys can see, the windows are black. Doing what it takes, being on a 6 a.m. coffee with Shanda Monday through Friday, doing what it takes. But back seven years ago, I wasn't doing what it takes. Not in my mind, but guess what? I really was. I was showing up every day. And even though I looked at a computer screen and got nothing done at the end of the day, give yourself grace. Give yourself a break. You're doing what it takes. If you show up every day, you are doing what it takes. But you've got to get yourself to make the decisions and take the risks that move you forward. If you don't practice that discipline, which is a discipline I had to practice, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing today. So when I was losing it all, I went to a seminar. And I went to a seminar that, that was around real estate. And I, meanwhile, I'm losing my real estate, right? Like, Duh, like, what are you thinking, Shanda? And I thought if I could just learn a real estate deal, I probably couldn't save my houses, but maybe I could see the opportunity of working with real estate investors. And I grabbed onto that thought and I held on to it and I learned one real estate deal. And I went out and I did that real estate deal myself to just learn it, not even to make money, but to break even. And I ended up making a good amount of money. In fact, it cost me $21,000 to learn that deal. And that deal taught me confidence, which yields me power today. And that confidence paid off because I had enough courage to borrow money, put money on a credit card while I was losing my houses, completely freaking insane. I mean, I didn't even tell my parents about it at the time because they would have reprimanded me probably, except for my stepdad because they would have thought I was incredibly irresponsible with the fact that I wasn't paying my mortgage, but I found a way to pay $21,000 to learn real estate. It's amazing what you'll come up with. I mean, I journaled every day to find a way to make money to pay my mortgage and couldn't find the way to do it. Why? Because I was still living a safe game. When I grabbed onto a vision, which was what if I could learn a real estate deal to be able to sell to real estate agents to get to get a life of freedom because I never gave up on the life of freedom then if, if I could hold on to that and just learn this one simple thing like we teach list building right teach one simple thing if I could learn one simple thing that I could get out of this moment like I could see the light at the end of the tunnel my question to you is can you see the light at the end of your tunnel if not you need to talk to someone I mean you can talk to us you can talk to a good friend don't talk to anybody who's going to tell you to be realistic because realistic was not spending $21,000 to learn a real estate deal, especially since that real estate deal was not my purpose, but it was a connection to my purpose. It was a connection. So if you're thinking that you need to figure out what your purpose is right now, I'm going to say stop thinking like that. That's a broke way of thinking. You need to look for the light at the end of the tunnel that gets you to the next rock and you jump on those rocks until you hit your island and when you hit your island you have freedom and you don't get to that island of freedom typically typically by seeing that big grand idea and I, I've just never seen it like this I'm not saying it can't happen like this there are some genius babies that get born in the year get born in their life and they know what they want to do from the moment they were born and God bless those people but that was not my path right my path was every great huge idea I had it never worked out. It was like the rug was constantly being pulled out from underneath me because it never worked out. And I think the reason why it never worked out is because I needed to learn the discipline of making bad decisions work, making bad decisions work, meaning that staying in it and having it work, completing what I start, and learning how to get in a position where I could grab onto the light at the end of the tunnel and just get to that next point. And when I get to that next point, it would lead me to another point. And so jump the pebbles to your island of freedom. And don't give up on that. And whenever you have an idea that this is the big idea, 
simmer it down for a moment and just say, what is the next step? And if you can get good at doing that, I promise you, you will land on your island of freedom. You just will. So I'll take a couple moments and take some questions for about five minutes. I do 6 a.m. coffee with Shanda Monday through Friday. Um, if I have a guest, I can't be on Instagram, you guys, when I have a guest, but um, I am always on my Hardcore Business Facebook page. So I'll take, it's 20 minutes, Monday through Friday, and I will take questions right now. And for those of you guys on the East Coast in New York time zone, uh, it's 9 a.m. your time. Okay, so go ahead and ask me some questions. You can go ahead and do that on Instagram or on Facebook Live, and I'm happy to go ahead and answer any of your questions that you might have. I learned to play it like that since the zone event. Awesome, Erin. So my zone event is an event I do once a year. Adrian, hi, nice to see you. Awesome. Okay, so um, question, question, question. Sandy, I love this talk. You're, you're describing my life. I'm 23 years old in real estate, so close to losing everything, including $2 million homes. Yeah, and not so sure I have room on my visa to come to Pace Club Mastermind. Um, we'll make it happen because I know I need to make it there. Crazy how much I need this today. Yeah, so Sandy, um, just remember you can be seven days away from making a lot of money, right? So for instance, I have one of our clients who is a, she's a strength trainer, right? So I, I obviously have a lot of coaches and consultants and anybody who gives advice, anybody who gives advice, I mean, I could coach you into freedom if you just follow the coaching, right? But you have to remember that Everything can turn around in a week. Like everything can turn around in a week. So one of my clients who is a strength trainer, um, you know, like so she teaches like strength training, weight train, uh, weight lifting, you know, that type of stuff. And you know, I said to her, I want you to sell four VIP days at four thousand dollars for one client. Now this is someone who charges like two hundred dollars a month, right? And so that's a big ticket item. Like, and she had no idea what she would even do. This is what I mean by thinking past what, what makes logical sense. So she had to overcome like, so some of you guys are like, what would I sell? She had to overcome like, what would I do in an entire day for $4,000? Like, how can I justify that price, right? And it's in that stretch that miracles happen. And if you never get in that stretch and get intimate with that, that fearful moment of figuring it out, then you never figure it out. Like, then you never figure it out. If I never let my homes go into foreclosure, the opportunity was is no, having really low overhead, right? So did it suck losing the homes? Yeah, only for as long as I struggled to try and keep them. When I stopped struggling to keep them, and I just said, you know what? I, and I did everything I could. Don't get me wrong, I, did, I wasn't some like jackass that just said, oh, I've got, I'm not responsible for these. I had them in, in short sale contracts. Like the banks weren't short selling really at that time. They weren't, they weren't like um, negotiating so well. Uh, investors kept falling out of, out of contracts. It just wasn't, it just wasn't meant to be. I, what was meant to be was for me to go seven years of bad credit, right? And I had to turn myself inside out. Finally, I showed up. Because I, nobody else, I, could, I had to live. So finally I showed up in my life and made it happen, right? So back to my client, to close the loop. My client, um, she took the stretch because she, first of all, she's been through our leadership training where she's learned how to actually close the gaps in her performance. And so when I gave her the stretch, even though she didn't know anything about um, what to do in a $4,000 VIP day. She's a, a fitness trainer, for God's sakes. She sold that, and I think she sold it in a couple weeks, and she sold four. So that's a lot of money. It's like 16 grand, right, cash. So I just, you know, a lot can change in a short period of time. So, Sandy, I don't know what your stretch is, but I know that whatever the gap is for you, you still haven't closed that, right? And... And so that doesn't make you bad. It doesn't make you a loser. It doesn't even say anything about what you can or can't do. So whatever you do, don't beat yourself up because that will hold you small. 
what you have to do is grab onto the light at the end of the tunnel. Like, what's the opportunity? So, so that you know, um, Shireen's son, who is actually a Pace Club coach this year for our 2018 group going in, when she did Pace Club, she had a great list build. She made $25,000 in her first shot, her first, like, right after her list build. But then she didn't sell any money all year long. Like, she was just kind of in her own way. And there's a lot of value to learning that about yourself because when you're in your own way, you learn how to get out of your own way eventually if you don't give up, right? Or if you stay in it. She came to her Pace Club Mastermind. She did $95,000 in either seven days or 14 days. I can't re really remember. It was like seven days or 14 days right after her mastermind, right? So you get your butt there. And I will promise you, you will have major breakthroughs. All right, any other questions? <laughs> Awesome, I got my vision. Um, anybody on Instagram, do you guys have any questions that I can answer for you? So I just lost here, hold on. Uh, sounds just like me, forever searching for my purpose. Yeah, um, when you find it, there is nothing more powerful. It's like putting your life on, on, on warp speed to show up. I mean, you know, it's funny because I had a hard time getting myself to work back in the day. I would show up to Starbucks and look at the computer, but I never really got into the grind of working. And part of that was learning how to, like, I, I just hadn't found my purpose yet to really compel myself to show up on something like a 6 a.m. coffee with Shanda and commit to it every single day, right? And so just know that, like, don't scrutinize over like, what's my purpose? Like get into leadership training, look for the light at the end of the tunnel, follow the next light at the end of the tunnel. Eventually you're going to get there if you don't give up. And some people um, have a long road to go because you just started and you never, you haven't been on the journey of a personal development and other people you've been on the journey for a long time. You've been reading the books you've been doing the courses, you've been risking, but you just haven't quite got there yet, you're closer than you think. And just, just remember that, you are closer than you think. All right, you guys, I'm gonna end on that note. Um, I will see you tomorrow on 6 a.m. Coffee with Shanda. Uh, have a great rest of the day. Please share this with someone who needs to hear this. Um, share it on your page or share it directly with someone who really needs to hear this, tag them. And other than that, I hope that these six game coffees with Shanda really make a difference for you. God bless. I will talk to you soon. And have a great day.